were four men with ties to conservative organizations doing when they were caught this week in Senator Mary Landrieu's New Orleans office? Today, a lawyer for one of the men said they wanted to record embarrassing hidden camera footage from the office. The lawyer says that they did not want to wiretap or disable the senator's phones. The men are all in their 20s. They're charged with entering federal property under false pretenses for the purposes of committing a felony. Authorities say two of the men entered the office dressed as telephone repairmen, one of them equipped with a hidden camera, while a third man used his cell phone to videotape them in the office. A fourth man waited in a car down the street. All four face up to 10 years in prison. Despite a reported gag order, the conservative activist made famous for dressing up as a pimp and videotaping, videotaping acorn workers, James O'Keefe, who was the man with the cell phone recording the fake repairmen, he has tweeted about the incident, telling his Twitter followers that the government, quote, concedes no attempt to wiretap. Joining us now is Jonathan Turley, professor of constitutional law at George Washington University. Professor Turley, thanks very much for being here. Hi, Rachel. Why is the tweet significant? Uh, how could he get in trouble for tweeting about the case if there is a gag order? Well, if there's a gag order, it usually binds all parties and you're not allowed to discuss the case. That can sometimes raise some constitutional issues uh, about a person's right to defend himself in public. Uh, but usually if you want to get outside of a gag order, you have to petition the court. But putting aside the gag order and the possibility of contempt, it's a uniquely stupid thing for a defendant in a criminal case uh, to be addressing the media or the public directly. Uh, it's a very dangerous practice, and I don't know any attorney that would tolerate such a thing. Why is it dangerous? Well, because anything that you say in public uh, usually can be admissible in court. Uh, it also tends to destroy the relationship with the judge. It could bring uh, a charge of at least a technical violation or a contempt sanction. On, on New Year's Eve, um, Mr. O'Keefe tweeted that something big would happen uh, in 2010. Uh, he said, Planned 2008, Planned Parenthood VPs fired. 2009, Acorn defunded. 2010, get ready because this is about to get heavy. Uh, in terms of things being used in the case against him, could that be significant in this case? Well, it can. It's also significant in the sense that he seems to have been at least hinting and perhaps discussing this operation with other people. And, you know, the, the charges that were brought against him under Section 1036, that's going into a federal property with, uh, with the intention to commit a felony, uh, it also alleges malicious interference. Now, that provision on malicious interference, which is th Section 1362, that includes a section on aiding and abetting. And it also allows you to be prosecuted even if you attempt to, to maliciously interfere with, with phones. So it is possible that other people might have been part of a wider conspiracy, had knowledge or supported this activity. It, Those people should feel very uncomfortable. And in terms of the, the four that have been charged thus far, does it matter whether they were trying to cut off phones or, or wiretap them or if they were there to secretly gather embarrassing video? We've heard a bunch of different potential scenarios for what it was they were doing there. Is there a huge difference between them in terms of their criminal culpability? It probably is not going to be huge. If they were engaged in surveillance, there is a chance that they could have been facing more than 10 years, particularly if the court applied a consecutive sentence. Uh, but if, if they're just being charged with malicious interference as the felony, uh, plus this, this entry into federal property, they're still looking at 10 years. The question becomes where in that range they'll fall. For Mr. O'Keefe, he should expect to be the target of this prosecution. And, and there's a lot of aggravating conditions here. Jonathan Turley, professor of constitutional law at George Washington University. Thank you for helping us start this out tonight. It's nice to see you. Thank you, Rachel. Coming up on Countdown, Keith investigates how Sarah Palin, of all people, has garnered the wrath of the Tea Partiers. Next on this show, Rudy Giuliani has a State of the Union malfunction live on TV. Stay with us.